I bought an engine stand. So we're getting this thing put together. This is one of those tools that every time I move, I get rid of it because I'm like, oh, it's, it's not worth the space. I don't need it. And then I get stuck buying another one again. Upside though, this one is a, a power torque from O'Reilly. Now I don't know for a fact that that's better than my Harbor Freight one I had last time. This one has four wheels versus three. And we're about to hang a magnum off this and those things are heavy. So, should be fine. What's the worst case happen? It falls off, be, be fine. This one must have been put together on a Friday because uh, that bolt is different size from this bolts and there's eight of these bolts to mount the casters and these two are different size than the two over there. I haven't touched the other four. Hopefully they're one of these. You know what, it's a test because if you don't have all these tools in your toolbox, you don't, you don't need an engine stand, just like the, the no instructions. I mean, if you can't figure out how to put this together without instructions, you, you probably shouldn't touch an engine stand. So get this thing thrown right back together here. Just another wheel, a few other things. I'm definitely gonna have some spare bolts, but it'll be fine. There we go. Didn't even need instructions and no extra. Oh, wait a second. There we go. No extra parts and it's assembled. So now we'll go ahead and just take that back off. We'll get it mounted on the back of the Magnum, which is kind of buried over there right now. We'll get on here and start disassembling it. And there we go. A 300,000 mile 5.9 Magnum on the engine stand. It's getting a little late in the day, so it'll probably be tomorrow that uh, we will start disassembly and teardown of this thing. Now, this thing was making a noise, and that's the reason I took it out of the truck. The noise sounded like a lifter failure. But this engine has had its fair share of problems. It's got pretty heavy oil consumption that was not addressed by just fixing the plate gasket on the bottom of the intake. So inside of this thing, it is burning oil somewhere. And I'm gonna guess valve seals are shot in it just by how it acts on startup. On top of that, this thing has been ran low on oil a few times. And then you got a nice hole in the timing cover right there from where a balancer came apart. Now, I don't think that we're gonna find anything in here that's gonna be catastrophic, but I think that this will make a decent rebuildable core. Um, if you guys actually wanna see what my plan for this build is, I do have a video on Patreon where we talk about it. So looking in here, Those valves are nasty looking. Not a lot of room to do porting on the intake. But we can do a little. We'll do a little bit of cleanup in there. The thing that sucks is where the push rods run on a small block Dodge. That's right there. It comes into them and I don't want to go through to there obviously because that, that'll be a problem. But where I do see some room that we can work on these heads is the exhaust. You can clearly see where the carbon sits there versus where the gasket was. So there, there's a lot of room to clean up and open up the exhaust. And uh, those exhaust ports, dry, wet, 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 lots of buildup. So we definitely have bad valve seals in this. All right, well, we'll get this disassembly started. So I went ahead and took the valve covers off before. and was actually pretty surprised at how nasty it is inside of this engine. So I've had this thing for, I guess about three years now. And the entire time I've owned it, it's gotten oil changes every two to 3,000 miles. It's never gone past 3,000. And there's quite a bit of sludge in here. And again, it's not like it was cheap oil or bad filters or anything like that. It got decent stuff, but this engine definitely has an oil consumption problem. But I guess it'd be nice to get it cleaned out completely. <coughs> I do know the previous owner of this truck, I believe on the third owner. First owner had it for quite a while and seemed to take really good care of it. 
Second owner was an upholstery shop that uh, did not take care of the truck. They wrecked it. Maintenance was all just way behind when I got it. But I also can't complain because up until this engine started making noise, I think including what I paid for the truck, I have less than 3000 into it for using it for three years. So it's not a bad truck. It's not all rusted out. There actually isn't any rust on it right now. So I think it's worth fixing. So I've gone over the build on Patreon for what we're going to do with this in a previous video. Um, I guess I'm not going to go into all the specs with you guys, but there are quite a few parts that are going to go in the trash and quite a few others that I was originally planning on getting rid of that we're going to keep. I did want to build a 408 for this, but that really eats into the budget for me building my station wagon right now. So we're going to go with a pretty mild build on a uh, mostly stock 360. It's going to get a cam. Um, we're going to do different uh, rockers in it, some other bolt-on stuff like that. These are obviously getting reused. We're gonna go to uh, most likely a set of ARP head bolts. I don't think we're gonna do studs on this motor. I don't really see a need to for what I have planned for it. The cylinder head is not coming right off though. Brass hand, don't hit it with anything hard. There we go. That doesn't look near as bad as I thought. Oh my god. We got cross hatching in this thing. Let me get you guys off that camera and move you down and we'll come take a look at what we got here. Okay, so uh, let's see what's focused in here. I can still see cross hatching. The top of the cylinder ridge does not feel bad. Like I said, there's cross hatching, and that's on the bottom of the run of the bank. Pistons look good. Um, the rebuild kit I'm looking at, uh, we're going to put pistons in it anyway. I am, I am surprised. That, that is not bad. Let me get the head turned over and we'll look at the bottom side of the head. You know, I'm, I'm not mad. That actually looks pretty good. Got some carbon. And uh, I'm not surprised by that, but... I think that'll clean up just fine. Huh. 
I'm not gonna lie, for a 300,000 mile engine, I was expecting this to look a lot worse in there. I don't even feel a ridge, really. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll hop over to the other side and get the other head off and see if we're two for two on decent cylinders. Okay, so let's see what this one looks like. This one definitely had a bunch of wet exhaust valves and ports. Even the tops of the valves look really good. Now, we're definitely going to be putting valve springs in it, but uh, that's just because of the cam that we're going to put in here. I'm going to see a little bit more lift, and uh, we're going from a stock rocker ratio of 1.6 to 1.7 on the new motor. I'll give you guys more details on those parts as they arrive. Turns out though, finding cams for these to play nice with fuel injection and what I can tune into it, gets to be a problem because I don't want a crazy cam that's going to require a stall converter. And most of the cams for these Most of the cams for these are just made for high-end horsepower. They, they kill low-end torque. And uh, since this is a work truck and it does pull a trailer pretty frequently, I do want to try to preserve low-end torque. There we go. All right, we'll get you guys down and we'll look at these. We have carbon for sure, but bores look good. There's cross hatching again. I don't feel a lip at the top either. Oh, had my rag in front of the camera there. Quality camera work you guys get from me. I mean, they're dirty, but this engine burned oil, so I wasn't expecting it to be spotless in there. You can see dampness around the valves. I mean, it's definitely sludgy and carboned up. This, this motor had a hard life before I got it, and apparently I did not do the best job of uh, getting all that sludge cleaned out of it. I used good oil. I always use good filters, and uh, like I said, I keep on top of them because... You know, this is my work truck. This, this truck pays bills. So, I try to take care of it, but it'll be spotless when we're done. I'm back and forth on doing Gliptol on this motor. I usually do it in stuff I build. I don't know that I want to do that much prep work on this. And we'll see. No matter what, though, we definitely got some cool stuff that we're going to do inside of this. Um, since I am going to do more of a budget build on this, I think I'm going to do some of the tricks and tips and stuff I do when I do like budget race motors together. Just some stuff to make a little more reliable and a little better. But I guess I gotta get some stuff cleaned off the top here. And then uh, we'll get the retainer out for the lifters. The lifters are gonna go straight in the trash because I'm positive this engine has a bad lifter. And then uh, let's see about getting that timing cover off and see what the timing chain looks like. All right, I can't resist. We need to see what this timing chain looks like. Oh, nope, I lied, there are two bolts in the bottom. Pop those off real fast. This time the cover's junk. It's got a hole in it. So we go right to the scrap pile. Huh. I didn't know Dodge had variable cam timing in 97. It's not the worst I've seen, but definitely has some slop to it. OK, 
guess while we're here, go ahead and just take the timer and set off. Hey, Leroy, you want to come inspect it for me? Tell me if it's good, bud. What do you think? How does it sniff out? Give it a sniff. You think it'll be rebuilt? What do you think? Well, he didn't shake his head no, so that means this engine's good. We got the Leroy seal of approval. All right, we'll just go ahead and get this can retaining plate out of here. Any the bolts, thank you. Now once we get the lifters and distributor and stuff out, we can go ahead and take that cam out the front. Okay. Now we'll see about getting the lifters out of this thing. So this spider holds them down. And these are what keep the lifters straight. Because if you guys don't know about magnums, the Dodge Magnum motors a full roll. You don't want to come out of there. Go. Got it. I'm gonna have to look at that bore. Make sure that there's nothing going on in there. Doesn't feel bad. So. What we got here though is a hydraulic roller lifter. So, considering the Magnums went into production in, I believe it was 94. I don't think they were in the first gen Rams. I think that was still an LA series motor. But yeah, one of the big improvements when you went to a Magnum was it became a hydraulic roller motor. So that's nice. Um, these lifters are going to be junk. Uh, that's what was causing the noise that I ended up pulling the motor for is I had lifters that were shot. So I've got a new set on order. We're just going with factory replacements, nothing crazy. Get the rest of them out of here and keep working our way down the line to get that can out. Oh, see, that one didn't want to put up that much of a fight. But take that back. It's put on a fight. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that off here. I'm gonna get all these lifters out of here. And then we'll jump back. All right, let me get this distributor out of here. I'm gonna get the cam pulled out. I want to see what it looks like. I got a couple lifters that are fighting me a little bit, and I'll probably just uh, drop my wrench. Go grab my uh, little slide hammer with the vice grip adapter on and get them out of there. So far, the boards haven't looked bad in them. We'll have to inspect those closely once we get them out of there. There we go. Camshaft. Just with an initial look, it doesn't look terrible. It's definitely got some wear, but 
I don't see anything on it that's got me super concerned. That camshaft will not be reused. So, a little trick here if you're just trying to make a little more power on one of these 5.9s. The uh, cam from a 5.2 Magnum, which is the 318, has the same duration and same lobe separation angle as a stock 5.9 cam. But because they made a 318 make the same horsepower as a 360, just with different torque, we got 20 thousandths more lift on a 5.2 cam. So if you're looking to buy one of those, it's usually around $200 for a stock cam from a 318 Magnum. Whereas if you look at any other aftermarket cams for these, you're gonna be in the thousand dollar range pretty much immediately for a camshaft. So, how do the cam bearings look? Not the worst set of cam bearings I've ever seen. I'm sorry, you guys can't see anything there. Not the worst set of cam bearings I've ever seen, but they're not the best. But we'll get those out of there and check them out. I don't have my cam bearing tool over here right now. It's in my big box, so it's not in the shop. But I at least wanted to get to that point before we stop for lunch. So. Mess with more of that a little later, I guess. After lunch, we'll do the bottom end tear down on this and see if we're just as happy as we were with the top end. All right, so we are going to continue with bottom end tear down on this engine. I'm looking right now to see if these have been stamped. And I am not seeing any stamps on these connecting rods. So, I need to go get my stamp set out real quick. And we need to mark these things to where they came from. Um, I don't think connecting rods are going to get done in this build. I don't see a reason to do it. Um, best I can tell, Quite a few people I trust when it comes to building small block dodges a crank and rods and this are good to 600 horse. We're not going to see 600 horse in this build. So I just don't see a need to spend the money on those right now. If we're going to stay stock displacement, we'll just leave those in. And we should be fine. That all rolls over really nice. Don't hear any clunking or anything. All right, let me go find uh, my stamp set real quick. We'll stamp these rods, and then we'll get them popped out of there. Well, that's a find. Let's see if I can focus on it. I just pulled that out of the oil pickup tube when I was stamping the pistons. I saw it. It's a little piece of sheet metal of some type. I don't think it's a piece of bearing. And it's gone now, but I found that sitting in the oil pump, so now I'm wondering where that came from. Oh well, that's a later problem. There we go. Go ahead and get these connecting rods out of here real quick now that I got them labeled up. And then uh, probably pop the main caps out of it, and I'll probably just leave the crank sitting in the block for right now. I just want to see what the crank looks like. So right now everything is looking really good to get this engine rebuilt. First piston. Rings are intact. I don't see anything broke in the ring lands. Rod bearing is still in this one on the top half. If you look, we are just starting to get into the material there. Got a little bit of wear, but not damaged. Crank looks good right now, so we're just gonna continue down the line and inspect all of these. Um, 
we'll see what we end up with. So I got the second one out. Crank feels good, nothing drags a nail. And I went ahead and took one of the rod bearings out, the caps, to show you guys. 09 of 96. This truck is a 97, so that tells me that these rod bearings, and what I'm assuming we're gonna find is main bearings, are original to this engine. So, what that's telling me is this engine has not been rebuilt. This is 300,000 miles aware on this engine. There, there's no reason that somebody would have done something and put the original bearings back in if they had it apart. So I was a little suspect because I, the best of my knowledge, this thing has never been apart from when I bought it. And those cylinders look really good for 300,000 miles. It's crank right now. I'm only into cylinder one. Well, one and two. Looking pretty good. So if we continue this trend, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Everything is looking pretty good. I find a halfway clean rag here. The crankshaft in it is spotless on the rods. My bores look good and uh, go wide angle here. Rolls over beautifully, like the littlest bit of effort, just one finger. I don't have my quarter inch uh, dial torque wrench out here to get a rolling resistance on it, but every bearing I've pulled out of this thing is showing the 9 of 96 production date on them. Um, I will have to get my mic out and we'll measure the crank. But I'm going to guess this is standard. Standard rod, standard main, standard bore. I, I have no reason at all to believe that this engine has ever been apart. Everything in it seems to line up that this thing was built in 96, put into a truck in 97, sold in 300,000 miles of just abuse. <laughs> and... Our failure wasn't something catastrophic. Our failure was something that could have been fixed, most likely without even taking the heads off. Um, the noise in this was valve train. We had some lifters that are absolutely destroyed. But in all reality, this thing has bad valve seals. I'm guessing when we do the tear down of the heads, I'll be shocked if they're even still there. They're gone. Um, all the valves are wet on the backside. And we had excessive oil consumption from that. This thing would smoke hard on startup, especially the colder it gets. It was definitely temperature dependent. During the summer, pretty much no smoke on startup, but it gets below 40 outside. And it's bad to the point where, you know, you start this truck around zero degrees Fahrenheit, and it would smoke all the way down the driveway until it had some heat in the engine. But I'm, I'm very happy with that. I'll probably just go ahead and crack a rod, all these rod caps off real quick just to do a quick inspection, but I'm going to go ahead and sit them right back down on there because I, I don't see any reason to do anything more with this right now until I get some parts here. All right. We will take a look at mains. One of you guys has to be sitting in a desk. Someone knock on wood for me. Main number one. It doesn't get better than that. Go for number two. I don't know what the little line there is, but crankshaft doesn't have it and it does not drag a nail. I don't see a, a number on the main bearings like I do on the rod with the, the date, but I also don't see any indications that uh, 
Those are anything but standard. Normally on an aftermarket bearing, it will have, you know, 0 .010, 0 .030, whatever the bore is that they've oversized them at, which on these it's small numbers for pumps, but. See how our thrust bearing is. Bearing itself, a little bit of wear. A little bit of wear. Thrust bearing surfaces, I mean, they're still there. So, again, crank looks good. 300,000 miles. You know, when we're talking about a diesel, that's, that's not much. I don't expect anything crazy. But let me reiterate to you guys. This is a 300,000 mile 5.9 Magnum. My work truck. Since new. Third owner. I'm very aware of the fact that the second owner did not take good care of this truck. Make sure you guys can still see. Oh, you guys are about out of view there. Let's uh, bring it back to the party here. Rod cap three, crank, perfect. Bearings, looking good. I'm not worried about getting any numbers off them right now or anything like that. What I'm looking for is, is this crank clearly junk? Is the block junk? Because if not, a little bit later this week, we're gonna do the cleanup on this and then we will do all of our measurements to this motor. And see where everything falls compared to spec. So that would be our Thank you. Take a rag real quick. Wipe it. I don't know about you, but for me, that is perfect. I am not concerned in the slightest. So, what does this tell me going forward? That Later this week, I'm going to take the crank out and we're going to mic the crank after we give it a bath. We will get our bore gauges in here and we will check our main bearing bores once they're torqued, make sure that they are still round and looking good. We're going to go ahead and pull our cam bearings and make sure that all of our cam bearing bores are still round. Now, I can't actually check the cam to make sure it's in a straight profile. We'll go through and make sure the crank is still straight. And we're going to measure cylinder bores. Now, normally when I measure cylinder bores, I use telescoping T gauges, lock them in, and then mic them. But usually, when I'm doing that, I'm doing them to an engine that is fresh back from the machine shop. But looking at this engine, I don't see any scars or gouges or anything in the walls. Pistons looked good coming out. Every bearing surface in this thing looked good coming out. What I'm probably going to do is clean that cylinder up, give it just a very light hone to put some cross hatching back in all the way through and make sure it's got good cross hatching. And then I just got a new dial bore gauge coming. So we're going to measure it, but instead of our conventional top and bottom two measurements 90 degrees out to make sure that our cylinder is round and stuff, we're probably going to do four or five increments of height through this block at multiple positions to make sure that the cylinders aren't tapered or anything. But if those come back, I just, I don't see a reason to waste the time or money sending this thing off to a machine shop. I don't see anything in there that has me concerned. Now that could change with the cylinder heads because I do obviously need to check the deck surfaces, make sure they're flat. I need to check the heads to make sure that they're flat. And I'll see what I find inside the valve guides in there and what the general condition of the heads are. But 
right now I just I can't see a reason to send this to the machine shop and depending on what I find on the heads I wanted to use the stock heads because I want to be cheap right now so like I said the more money I spend on this build is the less money that goes into turbo LS stick wagon so you can see why the wagon takes priority for putting go fast parts on but if those heads are bad I don't know that I'm gonna waste the money sending instead of stock magnum heads to the machine shop I'll probably just order an aftermarket set for it they're like a thousand dollars but I'm happy. I am really happy with what we found today. I, I don't see anything in this engine that gives me serious concern. I am actually blown away at the quality of this thing right now. I mean, 90s Dodges aren't known for being the best thing in the world, but 300,000 miles, and I mean, this thing has been worked hard since I've had it. I mean, it, the truck lives on its overload springs with a flatbed and all the tools I carry on it, just on a normal day before I throw things in there. I mean, when I moved down here to Tennessee, that thing pulled a trailer countless times between Indianapolis and Tennessee, loaded. Even since I've been down here, it pulls a trailer quite frequently for us. I've done a lot of stuff with the neighbor's farm with that truck pulling a trailer. This thing has a hard life. And I, I can't be mad at it at all. This, this is in great shape to me still. So keep an eye out. There will be more videos coming on this build. I'm hoping in the next couple weeks here to have this thing completely reassembled and back in the truck. Uh, everything seems to be in stock for parts. But again, there are some parts that I have ordered that are already on their way. There are some parts I have to wait on, like the master overhaul kit, until I have all the measurements made. Because when you order that kit, you have to spec your main bearings, your rod bearings, and your piston sizes. So I cannot place that order until I know what I have. Now that I'm fairly confident everything is standard, that makes it a little easier, but I'm not going to order it until I've done my measurements. Because if I find out that one of my cylinders got honed out to, you know, 27 over or something, obviously I'm going to have to send the block out and get it machined, but... We'll figure that out going forward. Well, I think that's where this one's going to end for right now, though. Keep an eye out for the next videos. They'll be coming soon. We'll get this Magnum back in the truck and back to doing stuff for us.